Hello and welcome to the lecture on dementia, the challenge of diagnosis. The objectives for this lecture are first to describe the diagnostic criteria for dementia, then to consider different clinical indicators that are used to diagnose the different types of dementia and what clinical indicators are necessary for a diagnosis of dementia. Third, we're going to contrast how mild cognitive impairment differs from dementia. These diagnostic criteria were originally developed in 1984 and recently revised in 2011. We'll consider all-cause dementia diagnosis because there's increasing recognition that many individuals have what's called a mixed form of dementia. They may have Alzheimer's disease, but also have some cardiovascular changes that would um, contribute to a vascular form of dementia. Um, and we're going to think about the different ways of considering differential diagnosis for these different types of dementia, how they look a little bit different at presentation. So the de dementia diagnosis requires cognitive or behavioral symptoms that must interfere with a person's ability to function in everyday life. And they represent a slow and progressive decline that is irreversible. And that they're not explained by some underlying medical condition, such as a delirium or a major psychiatric disorder. And so usually in the diagnostic process, we do some lab work to rule out any underlying medical condition that could explain these changes in function. Once those are ruled out, we then may consider a dementia diagnosis. These cognitive symptoms uh, and the cognitive impairment is detected through a combination of history taking. We talk with the individual who's experiencing the symptoms and a knowledgeable informant, usually a family caregiver, to get a good sense of this slow progressive de decline in, in memory and in other functional um, symptoms. And then we also do an objective cognitive assessment, some test of different aspects of memory. Usually this cognitive assessment may be something like the mini mental state exam or the MMSC or the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, also called the MOCA. It also may involve neuropsychological testing in order to get a deep dive into the aspects of memory that are being affected. In order for a confirmed diagnosis of dementia, the impairment in behavior and in cognition must involve two of the following. And this is where we may begin to understand the differ differential diagnosis. The first is an impaired ability to acquire and remember new information, so problems with new memory formation. And this is a classic symptom in Alzheimer's disease as well as other types. The second is impaired reasoning, um, impaired ability to handle complex tasks, and sometimes poor judgment or being uninhibited. And this uninhibited nature or poor judgment is a classic symptom in those individuals who have a frontotemporal form of dementia. Infair, impaired visuospatial abilities um, and sometimes hallucinations are symptoms that may be more common in individuals with Lewy bodies disease. Impaired language or impaired ability to find words is a classic symptom, in, uh, an early symptom often in individuals with Alzheimer's disease. And changes in personality is another symptom. Um, oftentimes uh, apathy is a symptom that is more common in indiv individuals with Lewy bodies disease. Mild cognitive impairment is different than dementia in its degree of severity. Individuals with mild cognitive impairment have trouble with memory, but not to the ability that it interferes with their ability to carry out daily activities. So these are individuals who still have functional ability to carry out their daily lives. However, individuals who have mild cognitive impairment should be followed up because these individuals are at much higher risk for going on to develop dementia. So in summary, a diagnosis of dementia requires first the presence of a progressive, irreversible change in memory or cognition and behavior that interferes with daily functioning and represents a decline from the person's previous levels of functioning. 
This diagnosis must be made using a comprehensive history and an objective cognitive assessment. And the combination of both are required in order to make the diagnosis. The diagnostic criteria also must include two levels of impairment in cognitive or behavioral impairments. And finally, mild cognitive impairment is not a form of dementia. However, it could be a precursor or an early stage of dementia. So it doesn't interfere with a person's ability to function in everyday life, but does put that individual at increased risk for possibly going on to develop dementia.